Uh, so in 1991, the International Labor Organization uh, in Geneva did something that it very rarely does. In fact, so rare I can't even think of another example. Namely, it condemned the leading industrial power, one of its paymasters, which it shrinks from doing uh, almost always. Uh, the ILO condemned the United States uh, for, uh, in the case of Caterpillar, Caterpillar Company, uh, for hiring scabs, what they like to call permanent replacement workers. Uh, and the uh, ILO called upon the United States to adhere to international labor standards. Uh, at that time, there were only two in industrial countries that violated them. One was the United States, the other was South Africa. Uh, well, South Africa has changed since then, so we now stand in splendid isolation on that one. Uh, the, uh, in 1990, every year, the ILO, the International Labor Organization, comes out with a World Labor Report the 1995 uh, edition came out a couple of months ago. It shows that the United States has the worst record in the Western Hemisphere and in Europe uh, in, in adhering to and guaranteeing interna uh, uh, international conventions dealing with labor, labor rights and workers' rights. Actually, I'm exaggerating a little. El Salvador and Lithuania are a shade worse, so we're actually third worse in Europe and the Western Hemisphere. Uh, the, uh, the United States does not even recognize standard conventions on child labor or on the right to organize. Now what's particularly interesting for students and faculty and people like us who live in the Athens of America is that all of this passes without any awareness and any comment. Try to find some commentary on these pretty amazing facts about the United States. What you can find is just praise for our magnificence uh, as in, you know, leading the way to every wonderful thing. Well, the methods for subverting, I, I don't want to suggest that everybody is lying about it. Not everybody's in the universities and the corporate media and so on. Uh, sometimes the truth is told, and it, it's very often told in the business press, which tends to be more honest and open about these matters, much less concerned about that their audience might get out of hand, I suppose. Uh, the methods for uh, subverting Article 23 during the Reagan years were reviewed in a cover story in Business Week that I'd really recommend to you. Uh, I've written about it, but I haven't seen any other reference to it. It's a cover story in Business Week just a year ago, last May. Very accurate, very honest, as the business press quite often tends to be.